Listen, oh, oh, no, I'm talking over those cows. I'm talking over them, I'm talking over them, I'm talking over them. Those, cows. those, those cows. are cows, people. What cows, Paul? Well, Nobody's heard Those are Oregon cows. cows right there. The Nobody Orleans heard cows. them. The New yeah. Orleans cows don't have any mooing ability. Now, we want to report in. We did have our assistants go check YouTube and look in on some of the podcast episodes. We think we're being told. Yeah, our assistants. The music isn't on the intro. And we don't know when that happened, but we're going to get it back on. We know we're coming in and talking and having fun, but we always think the music is going over us, drowning all that insanity out. That's so, right. So that's, it gets a little over the top. But evidently, you see, just before this podcast, we went and did a check, an executive check of our prior podcast. We realized that the song ain't playing no more. No, so we're going to fix that. You go to YouTube, the Council's podcast, Jim Babjack. Okay, go to his episode. Yeah, go. And you, you, you start it, and it's like, is this a professional introduction? No. <laughs> it's like, where's the music? What happened to everything? Listen, right. we are professionals, and we strive for professional presentation. Paul's <laughs> listening to our last podcast. That's what you're hearing, Casties. Right. There's no song intro. Bring the part. Yeah, that's right? not cool. Why didn't any of our, our people tell us, Bob? Uh, uh, oh, no not- music in Branson. No music in Branson's. Oh, it goes, it's been going yeah. on quite a while. You know what I think? No. Here's what I think. Oh, no, I, what? I think it's Paul's fault. And and I think Paul gave other people the excuse to not work. Because for a long time, Paul started our episodes, our own episodes, by playing the rain, the park, and other things with his phone. And, oh, we're off and running. Here we go. And I think the New Yorkers heard that. I said, well, that's a fine introduction when Paul does that. <gasps> Probably so, it. Bob. And that became our intro for a long time when Paul would play the Rain the Park. And we'd talk through it like we always did and have fun. And then when Paul stopped, it stopped. I think you have a point here, Robert. But, but welcome to the podcast. Today we have an actor, an actor's coach, a vocal coach, a director's coach, uh, a uh, Tom, speaking, yeah, Tom. I'm sorry, a I'm speaking still coach. This is all the things, the hats this man wears. Tom Todorov. And uh, if you want to go T-O-D-O-R-O-F-F, Google him uh, while you're listening to us, having this fun stuff, you can yeah. uh, get ahead of the game and see what this guy's about. Hey, that's yeah. a suggestion to our listeners. So if you feel like sitting there with your computer, just Google him and see what's yeah. going on. Except they're not going to be it. offended if you looked at your computer. Paul good. wants to say yeah, something. What do you got, Paul? I'm back. I'm here. Okay. I'm, Paul's my here. He's present. On the now, baby. Okay. So what are we doing? Well, we're going to leave next week for the Flower Power Cruise. And uh, actually, this episode, we're on the ship, folks, while you're listening. I was it. saying, I'm feeling a little rocky. Uh, yeah, I forgot. We are on the Flower Power Cruise. We left <laughs> last week. And uh, we're, we're, believe me, we're busy on the ship rounding up new guests for the podcast. We're busy. Uh, tomorrow night, we're going to Mickey Dolenz's show, and we're going to cost him at the end. And, if my uh, sunburn clears up. Order him into our podcast. I wish we could do it right there with him. I, I did want to mention uh, about the podcast and, and the ship. We're going to be on there, but I, I was talking to somebody who's in really high up in, in the whole celebrity cruise thing, and they have a new thing on the TV, and I saw a bit of it. And what it is is it's, it's, a, it's a show, and we love these shows. We watch them all the time, and it's called – Cruise ships going into monster waves, <laughs> dude. Oh, hell no. Oh, yeah. And the, oh, and the no, whole furniture is no, no, no. moving from one side to the other. You, you have saying? never been on that kind of cruise. Wait a minute. You're saying that on the cruise itself, if you go up and there's Love Boat, there's everything else, but there's a yeah. channel of, of, of pitching cruise no. boats? It's no. no good. You guys, guys, no, that is wrong. <laughs> I think people that don't cruise watch that and wonder why people cruise. I can't watch it. I don't. I fly a lot. I don't watch why planes go down. I watched uh, it last night. I watched all these. Man, it was so funny. Everybody was so weird. Died. Nobody dies. You just got to stay out of the way of the grand piano as it goes from left to right. (laughs) (laughs) You you know, the thing about dying on it, though, is like, that's not the issue. (laughs) 
<laughs> There's so many issues on that. I've seen the news article where the rogue wave hit the cruise ship. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Stop this. We're out on the, we are out here now. Stop. If you go on TV, you can watch 20 in a row. Driving me to dream. Look, we're, look, we're all playing the stats, okay? Remember COVID? <laughs> Do you know how many statistics there were again? <laughs> oh, if you go out, you'll get COVID. It was like, if, if you go out, you'll get COVID. There were 20 things ahead of COVID that you were going to get before COVID if you went out. So there's all <laughs> these bad stuff out there. Then evil lurks everywhere. That's funny. Only the shadow uh, knows. I'm just joking. It's not on the TV hey, in our but, you know, Paul might have to leave early because he runs this ship like you can't believe, man. He's the best ambassador for the councils is our brother, Paul. He's out there chatting it up. I'm not going. And, <laughs> Susan, every time I've gone through the buffet, Paul is sitting at a table eating with somebody. <laughs> That's right. Hey, hey, it's incredible. People know me to do that. In fact, what's happening now, and I love it, is that if I do it to people, then they're coming by and they're going, man, I'm going to sit with Paul at his dinner. And then they sit down and I look at him. I go, hey, how are you guys? And they go, well, do you mind if I sit here? I go, I do not mind if you sit here. Can I eat, though, while you're sitting here? And ask me questions. Now, I might have food in my mouth when I answer them, but <laughs> man, I want you to sit down here. So, yeah, I That's think that's a great think, disclaimer, man. I'll, I'll remember that. So do you mind if I'm like eating spaghetti and like some yeah. pops, everything good there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sorry. Um, hey, you know, to me, it's like, what shows, what shows? I know that the Fab Four, F-O-U-R, not F-A-U-X, not F-O-R-P, yep. not F -O -U -R -P, you, know, you know what I mean? It's like there's so many Beatle bands, but the Fab Four, F-O-U-R, are on this cruise. I For real? For real. I suggest that everybody, they were on last year. But oh, okay. You could have missed them. And the I only did. reason, I know, the only reason I didn't, I was I was walking to the buffet alone and I heard Strawberry Fields and I'm going, what the hey? So I go over, it's the Fab Four. Okay, I've never heard of them, never seen them. Okay. There's so many Beatle bands. But I'm sitting there and and I, I didn't walk for 30 minutes. They did these Beatles songs and just as I'm thinking, I'm sitting there going, no freaking way. Really? Yes, really. And you know me and Beatle bands. I sure do. That's why you got my interest. Were there two Beatle bands on the ship last year? There may have been. Okay. Or a 60s cover band versus this is spe specifically Beatles. And uh, yeah. they cover it. That's foursome. They cover it so well that it, I, I had to get going. I don't know why I couldn't watch the whole thing, but I'm going to get to them this time. Do they dress I'm up? Sitting there thinking, no way they could do this. They start scrolling this testimonial thing to the side on a screen. It says, as I'm doubting them, just as I'm, everything you are hearing in, in with this band is actually performed by the band itself. While they're playing, they're saying, get that out of your head. This is them. Oh, yeah. God, yeah. Yes, they're that good. That I'm going, wait, uh, this is like ridiculous. You know? But that they, but that they pre-thought oh, that yeah. people are going to be out there thinking we're so good they won't believe I it, so know. we'll run this affidavit. <laughs> so I started sure. thinking that I go, this is not to be believed, you know. I so can't that wait, good guys, letting you know. And then we got to see Godfrey. You know, we talked about the bands. Well, thank yes. God the Yardbirds this year, right? Yeah. yeah, the Yardbirds, Buckingham's are coming out with us. Hey, the Fifth Dimension are coming out with us. Who's in it? Are, are, are Billy or Marilyn there, or is it just no, Flo? This and is Flo. Yeah. Flo, that's okay. okay. Flo. And the grassroots are coming, so Marky will be out with us. Wow. Okay. Hey, fun. Donnie. The family Stone, again, coming back out. My favorite. Yeah. Hey, and you then, know what yeah. I want to see? I hope I want to see the Papas and the Mamas. It's a tribute band. The 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 papas and the I want to see some tribute bands. I do. I want to see yep. the Papas and the Mamas. I want to hear my well, And then the newbies are buddies. They're so amazing. Yep. Jeremy Clyde, you guys, from Chad and Jeremy is coming out. Wow. Billy J. Kramer, you've got to watch his show. He's incredible. Got to. I can't believe Billy J. Kramer is still around. I can't that wait to see awesome. him. I know you can't either, Bob. No, that's crazy. It's going to be amazing. Oh, okay. No, there is the Hold on. I don't see Hollies. Uh, yeah. Hang on. Go, Polly. They're all, all the way at the top. Okay. Oh, no, that's the zombies. You're right, Bob. No Hollies. Love the zombies. No Hollies. No Hollies. Um, but, Bob, uh, there is the Fab Four and the Jukebox Beatles. Okay, so the that's two. Beatles? Okay. Yeah, and I, I think I saw them last um, cruise. I don't think I saw the Fab Four. 
Okay. So, yeah. You were busy strange having days, pina coladas. Strange days a tribute to the doors. No, no, the tributes are good because they have to be. Kara Lee, a tribute artist, the Hall of Fame band, of course. Um, and yeah, the newbies and the jukebox and love and the newbies. Hey, did they say oh, yeah. who the sail away party is? Is is it Peter Asher's band? It is. Well, no, it doesn't say that they're it the sail away party. But okay. well, we'll, we'll, Asher's we'll. guy, the dark haired guy, the, his uh, uh, musical coordinator, he said that he told me that they always do it. Okay. That they had always done it. This was the first time they didn't do it. Correct. And, yeah, and but but now they're back doing it. Good. And so twenty twenty four is interesting. The box tops and the Vogues will be coming out with us. Wow. Yeah. Are we on the twenty twenty four one already? We, we are. are. Yeah. Look at us yeah. go. I know. Yeah. Um. And uh. Yeah. And so uh, get your tickets, guys. Uh, anybody out there who wants to go on the twenty twenty four line uh, cruise. You need to start uh, calling that number on the Flower Power Cruise 2024 page because it's up and people are going to be buying. And we know how that goes. Yep. Yep. Learn more at 844-700-3569. Okay. To learn more about 2024 Cruise, dial 844-700-3569. Remember the 555-5555 numbers. We are actually set up... uh, uh, if this is happening now as Paul speaks, you got to get on the phone. These people are still on the ship out here. They don't do it till the end of the cruise. Exactly. So you still have time to jump the yep. gun. you got to because towards actually, so on an eight day cruise, about day five, <laughs> people, all of a sudden you'll walk by artist relations and you'll see a line. And when you, yes. hey, what's the line for? It's to buy tickets to next year. Yeah. Some people um, wanted us to get into these milk commercials, okay? There's the little message. Could you dive into those a little and sort of, uh, because I, I'll tell you the first thing about the milk commercials is it came at a time when nobody did commercials like this. If you were in pop music or rock and roll, it was viewed kind of like a sellout maybe. If you took your music to the advertising world, it was a sellout if you took yourself to the advertising world. And of course, just yeah. like knuckleheads we are, into the advertising world we go. Yeah, we were uh, the first celebrity yeah. endorsers. We go right into the milk commercials. The only thing missing was missing were the mustaches because the campaign <laughs> was huge for the It time. was. Yeah. And it was super fun. And I really I love doing those things because man, that was like what you know how we always do the shows in New York or usually those variety shows or like sure. craft music hall or, and you know, that was one way to be doing all that stuff. But we were outside on location, on bikes, on boats, yeah. on the water, in the pool, on the rock. It was like, this is the bomb. It was I too am- fun. Go ahead, Paul. You, you, yeah. So we would be, you know, out on tour during these commercials uh, during the whole campaign and we'd be just going from city, you know, from Idaho to Iowa. And man, right along the highway, these huge, you know, the big, gigantic Merrill, po- you know, the bullboards along yeah, the highway. And there yeah, we are yeah. with milk. So that's when you know something's big. <laughs> we were on yeah. bullboards. You know, okay, we wish it would have been for our music, but what the heck? Who cares, right? You get on. And also, board. look, we were in weekly readers, we were on billboards. Uh, and and we were on TV, darn it! And a lot of people yep. saw those things. I we were busy. We never even got to see our own commercials. But we had fun doing them, man. I remember it was a hoot. Yeah, we were. A- we did them in Newport, Rhode Island. They took us there, and I'll tell you a big deal about it um, was they put you in some settings that were kind of cool. We had wardrobe, okay? So yeah. we're trying this suit jacket on, that suit jacket on. We got some nice. Some of these commercials are pretty good looking. We're jumping into private planes, looking like it's us, and, you know, <laughs> and having a lot of fun. Well, well, I, want to, I want to tell you that the wardrobe lady, I, I actually remember this. Um, okay. She was uh, Hedda Hopper, who was a gigantic, uh, you know, uh, designer of clothes and stuff. The girl we had actually worked for Hedda Hopper. Oh, okay. And actually did her her hair and stuff like that. Yeah. So and she was very so big was that time. that lady with the black short hair? I remember yes, her very yes, well. Yes. All the yeah. change of costumes we were she doing. Was, was she crazy. was like, like blah, 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 but very cool. Yeah. But yeah, the other that. thing that wasn't, I didn't like, one more thing, it was that the only thing I didn't really like about it was that the milk was always warm. 
It was never even on a chilled side and nobody got ice. So that was the only drag. We didn't have to drink a lot of milk, but it wasn't well, very good. One of the things I didn't like about it was that my mom would always forget to tell me that I needed to take a shower and wash my hair. And then I'd get there and that lady would be putting clothes on me, being real nice and going, girl, you need a shower. And I'm like, ah, I take a bath once a week. <laughs> well, no, for dumb. real. And she yeah. put me in a, I remember we were doing something. Oh, no, no, you're nine. You're nine, Susan. Yeah, nine. man. And mom is like, I'm like, Jesus, how embarrassing is this? My own mother. Like, I, and yeah. now from that point on, though, Every day we'd sh- I took a shower every night and she'd be like, well, look at you. She goes, OK, take it easy. You know, you don't have to shower every day. Now, <laughs> like- yeah. now people, you can go on. So w- when we saw that question, of course, you go on YouTube, right? Say, well, what's up there? Yeah. So we went on YouTube, put in the council's milk commercials. And I t- people, the first three that pop up, none of us remember even doing. But there <laughs> we are speaking and there we are telling you about milk. And there I am with wonderful black hair I don't have anymore. So it's a real <laughs> It's a real journey, what these things it is. Are. And it went from East Coast to West Coast. To you know? did, I don't remember the West Coast. Where did we film oh, in the West Coast? Paradise, oh. Paradise Cove. And the, the, what was the um, uh, roller coaster? Where did we do the roller coaster ones? Remember we had the glasses, they were painted? Oh, oh yeah. Painted, yeah. because we're like, how are we supposed to come up over this thing? And they were painted. We Could have been to California. That's yeah. interesting. Maybe out at the um, Santa Monica. I'll have to look at those. I haven't looked at those in. A- Dude, the ones on the roller coaster. We're coming up over that thing. Ah! Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> we're in, that. In, one last, another thing about the milk. So we're in Newport, and I know you have a shooting schedule. You just have a shooting schedule. Period. Who cares if it's a monsoon at the yeah. intersection of Bellevue Avenue and uh, you know going down Which the Memorial, so Memorial they set Boulevard up the table. Bellevue. For the councils on the in the intersection in the pouring rain, and I'll never forget. You think warm milk, water yeah. down warm milk was worse because you take and take after take, and we're having fun, we're soaking wet. Oh, this is so fun, but we gotta drink, <laughs> gotta drink the milk, yeah, yeah. and the yeah. rain is pouring into the milk, is watering it down. It's warm. There were a lot of things. I remember getting tossed off the Black Pearl ship uh, into the ocean, and it was like ten degrees in the ocean, and I. I come up out of the water and all I heard were this were the words take we got to do it again take two and I'm not, I don't uh, know. Oh, I yeah. Remember oh you, yeah I remember you experiencing that because it was freaking It was so fun Me and Bill oh, loved that doing that really dangerous to me Me and Bill loved it yeah, they picked me up and tossed me into the ocean. Who wouldn't want to like do that? Like three, to four times or whatever. He kept yeah. telling the guy, hey, tell him he's going to have to do it over. I'm sure I one know. or two of those, we didn't, they didn't even need the footage. But guys, where were we living when we did those? California. So we, we flew to Newport. We flew to Newport and we flew to Wisconsin. That's where we, now Now in the Midwest now, so you got rain. In the Midwest, we're milking cows. Okay, the cow sales are my, Mayfair. literally milking cows for the American Dairy Association. Here we are as supporting our product and our endorsement <laughs> to a, yep. a level that we didn't expect, but it was fun, you know. Yep. And we also had to do a concert, like when we would go down there and have sure. a concert. They expected for an ADA concert when we were in their area. It was yes. very crazy. And we had our picture taken with that. Jewel. Remember the 1968 milker cow of the year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jewel. Cow cow of the year. Yeah, and we all took a picture with Jewel. Knott's Berry Farm with the totem pole. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Wow, so, it's crazy. Well, here's a good one. So here's a Paul story that, that we may have shared in an earlier podcast. I don't think so, though. But anyway, so we're doing milk commercials. And look, look. We're long over the fact that we're a family band and we're not as cool as we wanted to be. We're not the Beatles. We're not the Stones. Okay, so we're doing milk commercials. So we've, we've, <laughs> we're okay with that by now mentally. But we're still so we're up at St. George's, which is a private academy above awesome. Easton's Beach, above First Beach in Newport, Rhode Island. And yeah. we, I, they probably rented the whole freaking place. Who knows? But we got yeah, the boys of- academy at the time. Yeah, Boys Academy with with bicycles. We're doing bicycle shots up that beautiful approach uh, street that you know about. And but school is in session, so we're navigating around the boys, 
And, you know, boys, this is a high school, all right? And we're yeah. high schoolers. We're all punks. All right, so we're yeah. out there in our, our fancy clothes, and we're the fancy cow sills, and we got, and we took over their fancy campus, and they didn't. And we're hometown heroes. Oh, hometown <laughs> heroes. And they're, most of them are from out of town because they're rich. Oh, yeah. Them. So not to, no, I'm sorry, but that's what they were. Okay, back then. And so we're on the lawn out there filming our commercials and a whole bunch of the boys are going to come over and watch. Now, this is akin to baseball doing infield and the opposing team decides to go along a whole baseline kneeling. Down <laughs> right. You get real bad at that, you know. John <laughs> shit. Yeah. And then we're, we're doing our, we got lines, you know, we're, hey, drink milk, you know, these guys, <laughs> yeah. are, you know, how uncool. Hi, I'm <laughs> Bob Castle, big star. <laughs> yeah, big yeah. Star. Oh, so we're, <laughs> wind up, and they, yeah. then the comments start, the comments start, the castle, whatever, you know, what a movie. <laughs> and they're at a, and one guy in particular is is going to be the leader of the group, whoever, what's going on with the group of students, but the one guy's going to be more than he should be. Yeah. My dad, our dad looks at Paul and looks at the guy acting up beyond what he should be. And all he does is look at Paul and he says, Paul. And Paul, it's <laughs> like the gun went off to start the race. <laughs> Paul is on this guy beating him up on in this in the yard, right <laughs> in the commercial. I gotta wish, you know, today. <laughs> The cameras would never stop. Yeah. They would have footage. No, then, I'd be on ridiculousness. Yeah, but yeah, back then you could be totally shocked about things like this and go, what the hey? You know, the, the first yeah. WTF was flying all over the field, I'm sure, you know. Oh, yeah. And Paul said it's I safe. hated that. I Don't hated mess it. I with hated the cow it. Sills, you know, yeah. and it was wild. And mom was even mouthing off. I'm like, get him, Polly, get him. I'm sitting there going, Please, give him one for me, Polly. But remember, Remember, I set it up. We are long past. We aren't the Beatles and the Stones, but we are. <laughs> yeah. us. We are, we are us. punks. We and are I, Fifth Ward, baby. We're Fifth Ward. Just wanted it all to stop. No matter the fact that we, uh, I, all right, I'll say, because I don't want to uh, insult Fifth Waters. We are Fifth Ward adjacent. <laughs> we are Fifth Ward adjacent. Okay. We live just <laughs> above the ward. And, you know, so we've got okay. filtering going on back and forth with us up at Hallidon Hall in the Fifth Ward. Uh, Wait a minute. Absolutely. Wait. The Fifth Warders don't know that we're Fifth Warders? What is this news to Fifth Susan, Warders? People that live in Hallidon Hall above the Fifth Ward cannot claim to be Fifth Warders. You are Fifth Warders adjacent, period. Dude, it's a hard not life for oh, us. I take it back. We all went to school with the Fifth Ward. They were all my I friends. I take it back. Bob, you were I older. Knew. You and John and uh, Barry, Barry and Paul, and Fifth Paul. Ward students, Fifth Ward students. Right on. We, I mean, we went to St. Augustine's. He went to Rogers. We were with those little rocks. I felt more comfortable as a Fifth Warder than I did in Indian Avenue at Middletown. Me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was great down there. Even our dog hung out down there. You know, yeah. Curly, you let her out, how and up down to the Fifth Ward, Curly. Oh, went. my God. I learned to have an attitude down there. I would just say, you know, my brothers are the, you know, I had a my brother thing. Nobody messed you with me. You don't want my brother Paul to hear this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, was awesome. Great, great now, back to the commercials, commercials so. were amazing for so many reasons. So now, yeah. we can debate what it did to our reputation. Um, it probably solidified to many people that, oh, they're not, they're not the Beatles or the Rolling Stones. So it probably made, convinced a lot of people. But by this time, we're family. We're known as family. We're known yeah. as the happy gap-toothed Catholics. Uh, <laughs> Bob's favorite There's no better vehicle for milk than our family. It was great. They yeah. even, we even got to write. Now, you think if, you know, we have friends that wrote the theme to friends. Okay. Yeah. Honestly. And they, that they became millionaires off of that. Well, we wrote the theme for the milk commercials. Okay. <laughs> Nothing. Okay. We, well, we, dad did. <laughs> um, you know, we're sure, we're sure there was a million dollar deal. Done it was. Up. Yeah. I mean, the was Ed a deal. Show, we, we got this deal for 10 Ed Sullivan shows. It was in the papers at the time. It was the biggest deal ever. Yeah. And, we, and, you know, we only got eight, but it was a million dollar deal. I saw the telegram, million dollars. I did too. Yeah. The milk shows. thing ended well. The milk thing was always a positive thing all the way to the end. You know, yeah. Barry didn't like the milk thing a lot. And, and I, well I remember that filming in the middle of Bellevue Ave and some of Barry's pals were there. And yes. they were not being nice. Remember that? He got upset at that because he was like, these people, you know, why my life, my life. 
Got you. <laughs> well, it wasn't peaches and cream with the milk commercials for every cow still. Now, to, oh, be, no. to be honest, in the family, there were tears of that kind of thing, Susan, that Barry was putting up with, you know. Yeah. At my level, I'm putting up with it uh, for different reasons. Like the like, I went through that musical part of it. The music is just we were pop band, you know. I don't right. even think the phrase pop band was in use back then. They didn't know what to call us. You know? I know, right? Yeah. You know, so, now it's pop, not power pop band because we got right, pop, right. You know, it's great. But so we we get to have the theme song, which usually is a money maker, but it wasn't for us. And yeah. to, to make <laughs> matters worse. We wrote the milk song. It's called the milk song. Like, go to that YouTube. It's the song on all those commercials. You'll hear it. Um, that was the song that Bill and I wrote to counter Indian Lake because we didn't want Indian Lake to go out. So we wrote, it was called, It's a Good Day, Not a Milk Day. And they took a good it's day, turned it into the word milk, and took our song and put it in a milk commercial and wouldn't let us put it out, put it out Indian Lake. Emily! Tom Hannah! is our first, Tom is our first friend. friend. Tom's our first transgender. Tom oh. has had a new operation. Oh, oh that, no, there you are, Tom Tom. Look hey, at Tom's hair has gotten super long. Look at the chair. Hey, okay. Hey, Stay wait, back wait, there, Tom. Ladies and hey, gentlemen. Let him talk. Tom Totteroff. Well, that's us. When in doubt, more cowbell. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute, Tom Tom. I got your. I'm with you, bro. <laughs> Tom, here, Tom. Here's what you, need to do. Queen. Here's what you need to do. You need to get Hi, a hold. Guys. Listen. Hi. Listen. You well, need how much do we hold. miss you? I'm talking. Tom, get a hold of Saturday you Night said, Live. How much do we miss you? Tom, get a hold of Saturday Night Live. Tell them you want to get Christopher Walken and get the cow sills. Get them both on the same show. And instead of asking for more cowbell, ask for more cow sill, and then we do a song. All right? That's your assignment. Oh. Have a seat. I love the director oh, chair. Is, is that a director chair? Well, you, you got to you gotta see what it says. Of course. Tom yes. Totteroff, surfer, producer, doctor. <laughs> Surfers in the first position. I you know noticed that. Really good. Tom, where are you right now? Are you in the East Coast or the West Coast? Are oh, you been to this place? This is our house. You helped me move the speakers in and out of here on wedding day. Oh, is that where? Oh, oh okay. you're in the music room. Yeah, I see. Yeah. I see. You are yeah. in Connecticut. We are in Connecticut. We never oh, leave okay. Connecticut. Well, we go to the city. We go to the city. We actually saw a genius production of A Doll's House with Jessica Chastain on Wednesday. So it reminded us why we live an hour from New York. Because, you know, we I don't know. go to a lot anymore. But when we do, it usually knocks our socks off. So, awesome. But you did go west, though, right? You still you, still you, have the apartment in Santa Monica. Yeah. Okay. But flying, how scary is flying, right? Every night you turn on the news and it's like... Yeah, we're <laughs> talking about that, actually. <laughs> right? Crazy people, you know... Dropping thousands of feet. All right, down. all right, all right. Um, how are you guys? That You're is good. not going to happen to you, Tom. That is not going to happen to you. That's not your history. Okay. No. Well, Thank and you. you you saw that we have our happy together tickets. Yes. Bravo. I've scared oh, yeah. the news. Hang on, please. Let me address this. Please. Go. I got to tell everybody out there in our podcast world that Tom is has never ever asked for us to get him a ticket and you know what he's one of the few guys that we would get a ticket for but he has <laughs> never asked because he knows the stress of the artist going to the producer of the show and saying you know hey i need eight tickets and that guy eats you alive and tom never puts us through that and never 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 and well appreciated tom well i know i know this is a big gig and it's the gig that, that seemingly just keeps on gigging yeah, it's a, big, it's a gig that yeah. keeps on giving. This will be eight years in a row, Tom. Eight years in a row. That's You're pretty the only ones that can say that, I think. I think we are the only ones that can say that. The Buckinghams can say that they've done it eight times over the last 20 years. <laughs> They're not nearly as fun. And that's pretty uh, good. Decidedly not nearly as sexy. All yeah. right, all right. Yeah, so let's find great. out about Tom. Tom, okay. this is kind of like, this is your life without any guests coming in that door behind you. Okay. <laughs> and Tom, okay. they've been so kind because this is pretty much all I'll get in. I like to start these things off. So please allow me to welcome you, Tom Totteroff, to the Council Podcast, first of all. 
All right. And so what I like to do, Tomas, is right I like to talk about You're you right before you became your fabulous self. And though, of course, when we come into this life, we come in, we've got our parents, we start experiencing life as we know it as toddlers, things are presented to us, perhaps a fireman, lawyer, baker, candlestick maker. Were you, as a little dude, lined up for the profession you ended up in, which is all things film and or plays or acting, or was there a different plan for Tom Todoroff when he got started? Get the Santa Claus coat. Yeah. Well, it all started with playing Santa Claus in the second grade play. Well, that's an early beginning. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> and 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 the, the cutest girl in the second grade who looks not unlike you, Susan, Michelle Blake, got to play Mrs. Claus. Oh. <laughs> and my grandmother made me these custom red flannel pajamas with fur trim. When the show was over, she put the trim off and I wore those pajamas until they didn't fit anymore. Aww. It wasn't that long because it was second grade. But I got to kiss her on the cheek in front oh. of whole auditorium and people were laughing and and I just think something wired in my brain that it doesn't get better than this well, I'm glad you couldn't kiss her in this day and age you'd get run up the flagpole <laughs> Tom, let me ask you this though so mom and dad story there Paul <laughs> gentlemen your mom and dad were they theatrically inclined were they candlestick makers or bakers other than your Santa Claus experience, but were your folks artistically inclined? Were they musical? Were they, you know? My father played drums. Okay. But they were definitely dramatically inclined. You know, I just put this together. Your dad. Uh, my father got thrown out of the Navy for beating up a guy and putting him in the hospital. I love him. Right? <laughs> so a memorable like exit. <laughs> yeah. So, so, you know, the service, this, that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, a lot of drama in the house. Um, okay. you know, he loved movies and plays and all like that. And when he was around until he left when I was eight years old, uh, you know, we would go to the drive in and he actually, I mean, one of the things I've got a list of grievances, but of course you got to tear that up if you're going to live your life. Yeah. So you better hate rather than react. Right. Yes. That. Yeah. He took me to see the Cow Sills, the first concert I saw. I begged him to go, and he got us front row seats at Klein Hands Music Hall. How old were you? I was just shy of 11 years old. Holy I wow. saw you guys. Wow. Are you ready for this? Yeah. I saw you April 28th, 1968. I was the first seat on the left house center aisle. And we went to see the Bills play a few months ago and see Bill Maher at Klein Hands Music Hall. And I was able to get those same seats. So <laughs> I sat in the seats because I hadn't been back there since I was, I've only been there twice wow. to see you. And then three years later to see Three Dog Night, that which comes back to you guys too. Cool. Yeah. It was a Sunday. It was a Sunday. And, um, I've talked to Susan about this probably at greater length, but I had such a profound experience of seeing you that felt, I mean, it felt like a family reunion. And when the show was over, I remember being teary because I, wherever you were going, I wanted to go. Uh -huh. okay. uh -huh. right? And it was an afternoon show because I remember it was still daylight. And my father and my brother were oblivious to this, but I had a very real feeling that we would come around again. And that's what happened. Well, there you go. Uh, yeah, I have a question. Go ahead. About that first concert. Um, and I don't want this to be about us. This is, we want to get into you, dude, but you brought it up. So I need to know. First, I want to tell you, when you're sitting in that chair, the second from the left and the front, I'm the musician to the far, your far right standing there with the Gretsch guitar. That's me, okay? Now, hey, know that. since you brought it up, were we, how did we sound? We don't We don't know how we were when we were kids. You know, was it a memory? I mean, it, was, it, was, it was amazing with the orange tunics. Oh, right? yeah, the oh. orange neighbors. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Man. And, <laughs> and uh, I think Polly was behind the Farfisa. Yeah, the keyboard guy. Right? Yeah. 
Yeah. And uh, and and Barry played a Hofner bass. I was going to ask yeah. about your your instruments, um, but we have so much to get into. I don't want to get into your Hofner bass. Yeah. Uh, I'm jumping. But years later, uh, when I started producing film, uh, a friend, a guy named Steve Beauchamp said, um, listen, I met this really interesting guy and he was in this band that's a family band. And, you know, they've got an idea of a movie of their story. And, you know, and I said, what's his name? Uh, um, his, well, his first name's Paul. And I don't know that's Paul Casa. Uh, uh, Do you know who that is? I go, it's the first concert I ever saw. Wow, <laughs> dude. 17. I saw you guys April 28th. So I just remember that I was not quite 11. That's wow. crazy. Dude. Uh, Emily, dude. Emily and I, our mothers, have the same birthday, April 26th, what? which was two days before I saw you. Uh, my mom passed 30 years ago, but Emily's mother's alive and well. And only a week ago did we put together that her mother, who you met at our wedding, mm -hmm. was yes. Francie, and my mother was Nancy. Whoa, that's uh -huh. bizarre. You just put that together? Yeah, that's we, awesome. put, we put that together a week ago. That's all right. We're all late bloomers. <laughs> Tom, hey, that's why you got to live a long time. Well, the moment I talked to Paul, he's like, you you know who we are? I go, dude. And then he started coming to my class. And then we went to Rosarito Beach and then your dad's place. Yeah. And down you know, Mexico. Stayed the night down there. Yeah, it was and, stormy. Uh, it was nice. And then we lost uh, we lost touch for a while, but you guys were playing at BB King. No, oh, yeah. And oh. history was remade again. All right, back to you, Tom Todoroff. Nice try. Right. Listen. I want to ask a couple of things. So here's the deal. You're Santa Claus in second grade. You're hooked. Got it. But I know you well, and I know you have musician in you too. And if you can, and you can do what I'm about to ask, tell me how you incorporated the music. Also, obviously, did you ever have your own little band or was that just something you dug doing and you focus mostly on this acting thing? And then once you define that for me, tell me how you started parlaying this in high school. How did it start to become something that you might could make a living at? Susan, could you ask Tom if he did any sports inside of that square that you talked about? I'm going to beat your butt, Polly. Oh, I just want to know if he did any. Sports. I will do that. Okay. Paul, I'm going to do that. Tom, you can see Paul Squares acting up. He has a lot of environmental issues in Madras. Oh, he can catch Emma. a football. Good job, Em. He's got an NFL. He's a lefty. He's, He's a lefty. Oh, look at that pose. Oh, I love him. There's nothing we can throw at these two. There's nothing we can throw at them. Yeah, end of the season. Right, he's a wow. Heisman. He's a Heisman. All right, Tom, if you can go back to my question, you've answered Paul's. This is what happened when family and friends do do official podcasts. Um, okay. Go, um, Tom, okay. Tom, make him stop. Emily, where'd he go? He's doing 10 push ups. Oh, my God. oh Peter Morris. Look at that. Uh, is that the second grade Santa coat? Because it wouldn't fit. I'm not going to answer my bloody right. question. I'm Come gonna, on, totter off. Is that a Mick Jagger jacket? I'm John, yeah, I call this Santa Pimp. Oh, hey, okay, good. good. <laughs> Dave Chappelle as, as Santa. You, guys, you audio people, he's got this spark of Santa coat. Well, okay, the, the, the jump cut to the Santa coat is uh, I exec produced six films for CBS. The first one was a Christmas film. The last one was a Christmas film. And Thanks. the last one, there was a Christmas coat. And I said, oh, my God, Santa Claus is what got me into this whole thing. I want to buy the coat when we wrap. She goes, it's a rental. It's raggedy. And they charge you a couple thousand bucks. I'll bring you swatches and I'll build you one. This was in Canada. I had a pocket full of Canadian per diem. So nice. for 400, no, 400, 200 bucks Canadian. She gave me swatches and she built me this, this, you know, I mean, I wear this on the subway at Christmas time. You, you get all, it's a conversation. <laughs> yeah. And we always wear it for the Christmas class. So. Thank you, Tom. Looking Thomas. Good. So back to your question. Back we to have your listeners. Well, like, like you guys, <laughs> you know, February, 1964, the Beatles on Ed Sullivan, insane. Him too. You too. I, oh yeah. Yeah. And that's God bless David Crosby. He talks about the same night. You know, it's like, that was it. 
Uh, I wanted to take guitar lessons, cheap guitar in Buffalo, the strings about, you know, a a quarter of an inch off the fretboard. My six-year-old fingers bled like, you know, I had to go to the hospital. (laughs) Uh, Maybe I should play the drums. Now, that was years before a Strat, a Tele, a Les Paul, where you're going, wow, like up and down. Incredible. A Gretsch. Right. Going, look at the action on these guitars. What was action in those days? Well, the action was to the hospital. So uh, Paul McCartney, Paul McCartney validated my left handedness because I was the only left handed kid in my grade. And I felt like a freak because all the desks were for the right handed kids. And I'm doing this. Right. And then I saw him up there doing this and my life changed. That was it. Okay, that's pretty cool. That Halloween, I wore a Paul McCartney Halloween costume. You could buy a John Paul George Ring of Lot of one of the Scream movies, right? Oh, and, wait, 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 you just, oh, that's terrifying. That doesn't look like that. I go, well, can you disappear and go put that on? <laughs> that I don't have handy. We got a lot of real stuff here, but I don't I've been tracking, got lunch boxes, but I don't have the Halloween costume. Oh wow. Okay, you are enamored with the music. Did you parlay that into a band before you became? Yeah, yeah we played in the neighborhood garage bands, um, played our class day dance, so, but I had switched to the drums because it didn't hurt, right? Oh, interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah they're like little fingers, little hands, right? Yeah, I, I think I took like six guitar lessons. That was that in those days. Um, and then in high school and then in college, we had a band. There were three of us. Uh, we called ourselves Loud and Unprofessional. Oh, I like it. what were you playing? Playing drums. You know. No, no, I know that. What songs oh. were you doing? Uh, kind of blues stuff and okay. whatever was on the radio. Yeah, you know? all right. Whatever was on the radio. Okay. I mean, now, we all grew up in the golden age of music, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. you know it. I'm going to right. take a leap. I'm going to take a leap now. Take us from that child who wants to be a drummer and tell us how you got a full scholarship to Beloit in Wisconsin in Juilliard School. And what did you get full scholarships in? What is going on with you? <laughs> Smartiac. You, you guys are good at this. Um, well, uh, divorced parents, upstate New York, Southern California, four different high schools. Wow. Uh, I got about a dozen yearbooks because I heard the, the ones from where I would have graduated if I stayed to see what happened to those friends. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you guys know about that, right? <laughs> sure. You know, been living with Paul and this and suddenly I'm yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Right? So uh, four high schools, three colleges. Uh, Beloit was following a girlfriend there after starting at Fullerton. But okay. Okay. In- in junior high and in high school and in college, it was it was so funny. It was always the last year when I finally got my bearings that I would audition for something. And oh. invariably, well, 100 percent of the time I got the part. <laughs> and, and, and teachers, <laughs> were like, teachers are like, you're really good at this. You should go to Juilliard. As an right. actor, not well, as a drummer. A school, right. That's a music school. And my teacher, who was a Yaley. Uh, his name was Michael Pierce. He said, well, no, they started a theater program 10 years earlier, but nobody had broken out and become well-known yet. So I okay. auditioned for them. I didn't get in, but they wrote me a letter, which I still have. I just found it. It said, you know, we were impressed with your audition, but feel that you would have to do voice and speech work uh, to be accepted into our program. I was from Buffalo. Basically, I was saying Tam instead of. Yes. How ironic. Go ahead, Bob. Go ahead about just because you mentioned this audition tape. I'm fascinated by this. What is it that you're putting on an audition tape to get into that school? Are you reciting something? What are you doing? Great question. There's no tape then because it's the late seventies. So it's in person. The audition oh, for me being no. in Wisconsin wow. was in Chicago. And uh, again, the serendipity of like knowing you guys and later meeting Mr. McCartney and bringing Susan to a show in New Orleans and all that fun. I was reliving that the other day. Uh, I, we'll do those I was on the trip right now with you, Tom. <laughs> well, you're tripping uh, all right over there, brother. No, don't distract him, everybody. No, don't get distracted. Okay. Uh, Julia. It, it makes me laugh because, you know, my teachers suggested material for me and they go, well, you know, you'd be a really good Hamlet. Well, there I was, 20 years old, oh, going, 
Well, I'm pretty tormented about any number of things, largely. <laughs> so, you know, I, I think it was more psychodrama than anything. And then a little known one act by an unknown playwright named Sam Shepard. Oh, that guy? So I did these two things. And, uh, you know, I auditioned for a guy I had written a paper on a year earlier, Alan Schneider, who directed the original Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? Oh, wow. Uh, he directed the original Dennis. Waiting for Godot. Wow. Most of the wow. uh, the Beckett world premieres and uh, most of the, the American Pinter premieres. I remember so the Beckett's. I auditioned for him and I got the letter that said, you know, my teachers were pissed. They go, you're fine. You go to theater school to work on your speech. There's nothing wrong with your speech. It's the way you go. Right nowadays, it's very controversial to touch anybody's speech. Yeah. The whole really? thing has changed. Yeah, that it's like, questions about oh, you're that. messing with a person's natural rhythm and you're, you know, you're saying you're wanting to whitewash them, right? Okay. So, so there's that. So uh, I talked to them and they said, well, we want you to do the speech work. Okay. So they find me somebody in Chicago from Beloit, Wisconsin. That's a seven hour round trip drive. It was 65 bucks an hour in 1977 which in today's money is just over 250 bucks an hour. Oh, wow. Whoa. I got a second job, waiting tables, oh, to give that lady that money for one hour. I did that for a year. Was that Stella Adler? Uh, no, that Stella comes much after Julia. Later? Okay. Yeah. Stella wasn't a speech person. This was a, a, a real pathologist. I'm actually still in touch with her. Her did name you is- learn? You learned what they meant, what you needed to do? You learned yeah. it? Yeah, and they thought I had a bit of a lisp, but I didn't. I mean, it's okay. like for most people don't, you, you know, you don't still, you know, we, our speech comes from imitating our parents in the neighborhood, right? Right. So anyway, so, you know, I, I did this for a year and every Saturday night after my, my waiter job, I would do my two monologues for any and every stoner in my dorm. <laughs> They'd be like, Here's the Todd, man. It's <laughs> intense. Hey, the Todd. Come here, the Todd. Hey, we just do the Todd. Hey, the Todd, do your little skit. Do your little skit, man. <laughs> They're monologues. What are you talking about? That's <laughs> awesome. Right? They're monologues, right? So oh, yeah. this stuff, I'm wailing, I'm yelling, I'm flailing about. And they always said the same thing when I finished. They go, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Yeah, and they can you say, imagine though having that at your ready? You're sitting oh, yeah. there. And they say what? They said, Told you the dude was intense, right? Dude's yeah, intense. Yeah, right. Hey, All right, Tom. But Tom. Yeah. Hey, Tom. You want some pizza? We want to pay you, man. You want some pizza? Hey, Tom. Snoop Snoop Dogg has the same story. He's in prison, and he can do that free form rapping. And all the other prisoners are saying, "Dude, you got to get out of here. You got to get out of here." <laughs> and he did. And he did. Well, it. so so the speech lady that I gave all this money to. She and her husband said they just had a brand new baby. And they said, listen, stay. We have a guest room. Stay in our apartment off of Michigan Avenue so you don't have to drive up in the dead of winter in February to do this audition at the Fine Arts Building on Michigan Avenue. So I stay at their place. I didn't sleep all night. I got up. I finished the audition. The speech lady, who's very British, is like, well, you've made remarkable <laughs> progress and you're prepared for a program such Bye. as this. But she didn't say ours. She said, such as ours. Alan Schneider, the guy I wrote the paper on, he looked at her like, what did you just say to him? He got up. He came around the table. He put his arm around me and he said, don't wait for the letter. We'll see you at Lincoln Center in September. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Wow. But I'm yes. My knees went. I'm crying my eyes out. There's no oh. cell phone. I can't tell anybody for three and a half hours till I get back to Beloit. So that's what got me to New York. A few years after Juilliard, well, actually one year after, I was in a play in Baltimore, a season of plays. And the last play, there was a guy in the play who, when he got excited, you've seen him in a bunch of movies. His name is Joaquim de Almeida. Um, he would be like, I'm going to kill him like And you go like, <laughs> what did he say? Do you know what he said? I couldn't understand him. My teachers at Juilliard said, listen, Tom was a great speech student, worked with him. He got a movie that got me to Mexico. Suddenly I'm coaching Bob Hoskins and Richard Gere. So the very thing I didn't get into school for, 
you're doing. Yeah. I, I'm now doing. And, and the, be, the best part of this, when actors love to plead poverty and their circumstances, I go, listen, you want to talk about synchronicity? The woman that I paid that money to, that little baby they had, 22 years later, she sent to me in L.A. to study with me. She paid for her classes and I got the money back from the person I gave it to two there decades ago. Wow. Yeah, Full circle. That's beautiful. Yeah. So, Tom. Right so, over. yeah. And you know what? I look, you had so many acting things, and that's how you really got going. And then all of a sudden, you turn to the opposite side of the camera. And, you know, I watched your Star Trek thing. I watched all those things that you did. And, dude, you were happening. I mean, it was funny. I actually, you got to look at the films of Tom's stuff, all he did. I actually recognized you, not as Tom, as remembering this character I had seen yeah. in this particular thing. And it was like crazy. So, in my opinion, you had it going on. And then it sounds like all of a sudden you're coaching speech and, and you know, you're you're working on the other side of the camera and all of a sudden you're producing and, and all of a sudden you're back to the dialect thing with Roma Downey. And then that friendship looked like it just was sealed in cement and on you went with her. So what was that transition? Well, you know, it's all just saying yes. I mean, my manager, who's a really well-known, well-connected guy, you know, Daryl Hannah from the beginning, Sharon Stone from the beginning. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, Casey Keach, uh, Faye Dunaway. He's like, Tommy, I can put you on a series tomorrow. But, yeah. you know, it's quality of life. I love her. And I love these dogs. Yeah. And I've worked in production. You know, Paul. You know, oh, yeah. They buy your life. Yep. So the thing about what you guys do, you get to be together. So for me, you know, if the script is great and the other actors are great and the director knows a fraction of anything about acting, it could be a great gig. But more often than not, it's not that. And it's a gig, wow. right? And you're going like, yeah. well, okay, so how many ticks do I have in the pump here in my chest? And going, how do I want to, how do I want to live them? I'm blessed in that I can do a number of things. So I'm a really great utility player, you know, because nice. I, I love football and I think, you know, um, who's that guy that played for the Saints, Susan? You know, yeah. he, he can throw, he can block, he can tackle. He's, you know, the guy I'm talking about. But uh, Drew, Drew Brees? No, no not no, Drew. The, the, guy, the guy who was Drew's backup. Oh, number seven, oh. number seven. Hill, yeah, uh, you know, that guy, like you could never cover him because you didn't know what the hell he was do. Tave them Hill, Tave them Hill. Hill. I got yeah, it. That's it. That's it. So that's the kind of guy I always aspired to be that I could throw the ball, I could kick the ball, I could catch the ball, I could block, I could tackle. You know, and if you can do all those things, you're probably going to keep busy, right? You yeah. know, rather than so much of the actor's life is waiting for something to be in production. Now, for those of you who are listening that want to be an actor, this is the golden age of acting. When I started producing in the early 90s, there were 100 to 105 scripted shows on TV in any given week. Last year, there were over 500. And that's so oh, wow. Content. That's all screening. It isn't yeah. really a feature world anymore. I mean, Harrison Ford and Helen Mirren are, you know, on Hulu. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. you know, so it's changed. And, and I like that, actually. You know, um, I mean, for us, we tend to go to the movies if it's IMAX and it's James Bond. Right. You know, on the <laughs> of the yeah. Um, you got something, Bob? Well, I was just I just wanted to say and then hear what you have to say about it, Tom. I just want to say the word Jimmy Buffett. <laughs> Seven years. <laughs> you guys did Seven your homework. Years? You we guys always do our homework. homework. <laughs> You did your homework. Well, yeah. You know, like uh, Emily thinks sometimes I'm 400 years old because I've had a lot of, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, that, that's not based on anything except history. Oh, of and, course. Uh, Tom. You know, but uh, I taught Jimmy Buffett's wife and Jimmy was having vocal trouble. And, you know, he came to see me for a lesson in New York. And then he brought me down to Key West and I worked with him. Okay. And um, he just kept saying yes. And suddenly I go, well, you know, we could coordinate what people are actually wearing. So it doesn't look 
to design, but it's not as haphazard as it was in those days. And if we had some gal singing back up and they moved in. So, so he just gave me carte blanche to order things like a 20 foot inflatable shark that went over the audience. You know? oh, <laughs> oh, 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 I've seen that. I had an idea. It's like, do it, Tommy, do it, do it. <laughs> okay. whoa, 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 for me. Time out. So you were a part of his production. Uh, this I didn't know. So you were his. So if you want to, <laughs> that's amazing. I've seen oh, yeah. that shark. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah the it's first true. year, the first year we did video, I designed the whole thing. And, and I had built like a three and a half foot remote control that he would like aim at the, at the screen. And you'd see like fuzz, the shark, uh, the shark from Jaws, fuzz. You know, girls on the beach, you know, and then there would be what would be the video for the next song. Awesome. And, you know, I just learned so much. And then also vocally getting him, he had to hang on to a guitar he to sing a ballad, even though he's not going to strum it. Okay. Yeah. Get him <laughs> after a lot of floor work to stand there. And I said, listen, if you do everything that I'm telling you to do, I believe 25,000 people starting with the front row when you transition into a ballad, they will sit down. Because for a lot of people, his concerts are just a background music for a party, right? Right. right. It was amazing. It was amazing. He's got a song I like a lot called The Coast of Marseille. And you watched, and I was, I remember I was standing in the left wing and just watching, and you watched everybody just sit down and really listen. Aww. And he looked at me and I was like, it yeah. worked. There so you yeah. that was a crazy gig. That was uh, private jets, uh, occasionally with lingerie-clad flight attendants. Are you um, Forrest Gump? <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe Zelling. Zelling. That's incredible. Go ahead, Bob. He did that for seven years with Jimmy Buffett. I don't believe it. Yeah, yeah, it's um, incredible. So Tom's a voice, speech, and acting coach, and and, and he's a, a teaches directing. But here's. I saw a little pattern in your history and I, it made me curious and, and you'll be able to tell me. So you don't just go to a, a vocal coach. You seem to have gone to like two or three or what, what makes a guy go to a vocal coach and then you go to another vocal coach and you go, and then I'm going to this vocal coach and that teacher. Are you getting, what are you just pilling? Does everyone bring a little something, but no one brings everything? hundred percent. That's exactly yeah. right. That. You know, um, Michael Shirtliff, I mean, the thing I'm I'm most amazed about in my life is that the books that I loved about voice and speech, about acting, um, about the Royal Shakespeare Company, all of those teachers became my teachers and became my best friends and passed their work on to me when they retired. And I'm going, they were books on a shelf. You became you know? them. Well... The, the, yeah. thing, the thing about, you know, all of them, none of them produced a movie and none of them directed a rock tour. So, yeah. you know, uh, right on. everybody, you know, the thing about conservatory training is they were totally out of touch with how to actually get a job as an actor. And, and they wouldn't talk about it because the reality was they didn't have to do it. And they didn't really know about it. So if you don't learn that, you know, you guys... You know, Bob, you were there in the valley doing your gig all the time. And it's like, you got to be able to stand and deliver. I went to Juilliard with so many kids who were really gifted. Maybe they did a job or two after school, and then they just didn't have the street sense of how to feed themselves with this stuff. Yeah. And, and I figured out that these teachers, you know, I happened into Stella Adler's class and I was with her the last few years of her life. And then she's gone. So these people, you know, to get it from the horse's mouth, Stella is the only American we know of who actually studied with Konstantin Stanislavski of the Moscow Art Theater. She studied with him in Paris in 1934, uh, and I studied with her. So I tell folks when we're working, well, you're one degree from Stella and you're two degrees from Stanislavski himself. Hell yeah, brother. That's awesome. Mind Quality bro. control, Tomas. <laughs> right? It's just so cool. Because it's not it's not anything you can recreate once they're gone. Right. 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 So well, like this way, we teach people all over the world this way. And if well, you miss a class, they're all recorded. 
And all auditions for film and television and most of Broadway is done on Zoom. And you get to control your background like you guys have the background you have. Those are virtual backgrounds. You get to control your lighting Uh, because actors initially were like, I'm going to go back to the way it was. I go, no, you don't. Fluorescent Uh lights, same big cavernous room. Your voice is out all over the place. It feels horrible. You get to control all this. And I tell people like right now, I don't know if the three of you are wearing trousers. (laughs) <laughs> I am correct. Mm-hmm. Always, it's a leap of and faith. My man. Hey, Tom, this yeah. is this is out of left field. But when I read it, it was out of left field. I need to know. So you, you go through. You're in. You're in Buffett land. You know, you're a parrot head for a while, and then you're over here, and then you're you're uh, out of the country. You're doing it all over the world. But where's your? How are you in a room where somehow you're going to come up with the first actor training program in Saudi Arabia? Good question. Great question, Bob. That's amazing. You know, it's it's a great question, and it's. Um, I wish more people asked about that because you know we taught the first acting class in the history of Saudi Arabia and the first <laughs> acting class right before that in Dubai. Now. You know, uh, the better part of 16, 17 years ago, I I couldn't really tell you the fundamental differences between United Arab Emirates and Saudi. Yeah. So there I was in L.A. working. But, you know, you guys are so brilliant at this. It's like life is is like a great improv class because life is an improv. We're all making it up. Right. We are all trying out. Right. I mean, how did I end up here? How did you three end up in three different cities and where you are? It's like, you, right. you know, you keep saying yes to the next opportunity. And, and then suddenly you end up in a room that you never imagined. So, you know, we were in L.A. and somebody came and said, I want to bring you to Dubai. And Emily and I had just met. And I said, you know, a lot of people go, I want to bring you to Toronto. I want to bring you here. <laughs> some made it happen. Some didn't. Well, there it is. We're going there. And that was amazing. And then somebody we met in Dubai, we had lunch at that Bar Jello Rob, that sailboat looking hotel, supposedly the only seven star hotel. Oh, I, called it, I called it the home of the $250 lunch. There was a film industry in in these countries, yes. Well, they're oh. wanting to be, and this is this was what was fascinating. Uh, it's a very um, intuitive question. So we met somebody in Dubai who said, "I want to bring you to Saudi Arabia." And I'm going, "Well, what I know about Saudi, and we still had Blackberries, so he didn't have the internet access." And going, "I don't think there's a tourist visa oh. there, right?" And he goes, "No, but I know a couple of princes. I can get you both in the country." <laughs> Okay, what what Emily, you want to go to Saudi Arabia? Want to go to Riyadh? So we go there, and Emily's got to, you know, be all covered up. Not yes. on Dubai, she didn't have to be covered up. So yep. we um, we taught in Dubai again. Only we flew from Dubai to Paris first, or right right to Saudi from Dubai, right to Saudi from Dubai. From Dubai, we went to Saudi. Saudi. When, the, the first time we went to the Saudi. The first time, I think. Yeah. So Emily's got all her stuff. Nobody's wearing it on the plane. So, you know, you put it on once you get there. Yeah. We th- no, we went through Paris. So, when- yeah, we did go through Paris. Yeah, so we fell, we fell asleep. We wake up. The plane's empty. We get off the plane. Emily's going to go to the ladies' room and get all covered up. Too late. A guy with a machine gun throws me up against a wall, sticks the gun in my gun and goes, is this your wife? Is this your wife? Is this your wife? I'm going, oh, actually, we're not married yet. <laughs> uh, wow, dude. Oh, God. Yeah. Out of the shadows steps our handler, which I did not know we had. Oh, oh. Thank God. And he handled it. She covered all up. Uh, they lost my clothes for about five days. I'm wearing ridiculous clothing borrowed from local folks. And uh, we taught the first class with men and women in the same room in a British compound. I mean, the level of security was insane. Wow, man. Did you call it, did you, did you call it live acting? Live acting? Yeah. 
Saudi Arabia, they're, well, they have, they took golf away from here and it's live golf. Yeah, I so oh. I was thinking it could, it was live acting. I, I don't, I don't know if it was that, but this was a, a really fun, they were so grateful. Tom, Tom, what day. kind of, what kind of students are in this class? What are these, what are the goals of these kids? What do they want? All walks of life and older folks, you know, with our school here online all around the world, a lot of our most motivated people are 40, 50, 60 plus because they're not screwing around. They're going, you know, I want to do this as a kid. My dad talked me out of it. He said he wanted me going to college. If I did that, he made me get a business degree. I hated business. You know, <laughs> so I became a teacher. No, I'm going to do this. They're the strongest actors are the ones because they got something to act about. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 They've lost some friends, right? Yeah. So, you know, I, I always say that when you pick up a script, an 18-year-old says, wow, it says he has to cry here. I, I hope I can. If you're over 40, it says, wow, it says he cries here. I hope I don't sob through the whole damn thing. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Easy right. peasy. <laughs> yeah, I got plenty of stuff to cry about. But they were so very grateful. And then we realized that people are the same all over the world. And then we got to know, we went back again and dealt with the Saudi Arabian, called SAGIA, Saudi Arabian Government Investment Authority. They were building 14 years ago, four cities the size of Washington, D.C. And when we were there, the last time we were there, which was then, uh, the majority of their population, like 75% of their population was under 12 years old. So oh. fascinating to watch this happen. Now yeah. they have movie theaters since we've been there. They have some legit theater. Women can drive. Hallelujah. Wow. Right. So, you know, it's really shifted. But it was amazing to go to a private home because all that covered up stuff is just for public. You get to yeah. a public for dinner. Go lame mini dress. Oh. Crazy makeup. And you're going like, Wow. wow. Yeah. Wow. The girls, look, I went to Dubai. Russ and I did education. Dubai. Yeah. And the girls in Dubai under their burkas, what is it called? Burka, uh, whatever burka. it's called. They are, burka. Yeah. They're dressed to the nines under these things. They've got these oh, yeah. shoes. They've got these tights. You oh, can yeah. see it right under it. You can so see it. It's fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They were like, uh, and then yeah. they insisted on the last day of dressing me in their clothes, which I still have. And I put the whole thing on, and they said, "You look good. This looks very good." I go, "I look just like you. I'm wearing the shirt." <laughs> yeah, that's the idea. And, and it's good said, to blend. Only, it's good to blend. Only <laughs> not just not just uh, Riyadh. You are more hip, like from Jeddah. <laughs> I'm going, oh, oh, okay. I guess oh, yeah. who who knew but that, they that Riyadh had a near hip yeah. town? You know. So they, Tom- they they named me Thomas of Arabia. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I love that. Now, you know, I'm just curious, just as a quick yes or no. Have do you did you have you documented your life and you have footage from Saudi Arabia? You have footage from where you were here, where you did that? Do you have yourself acting all through your years? Or were you like us where our parents never pulled out a camera? It just wasn't in the brain. Yeah. I mean, from grammar school, like, I can't believe there's not a picture of me as Santa Claus, right? It's like, crazy? Well, like, wow, you guys were like, having a kid was like, you know, buying sneakers at Kmart, right? No and, kidding. Like, you know, you just, you know, you didn't really think you about it. You buy them and you toss them in the trunk. <laughs> well, and you you know, I mean, we're, we're all, you know, I mean, we shoot our class on these things. Right. You know, I mean, the video on this on this iPhone 14 is better than the best high def camera we bought. Jeez, yeah. Oh. I hate that. So yeah. Tom. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, you, know, you know, it's interesting to that point. If I just might make a point there, it's like, yeah, we, we have the new album out and we were thinking, man, we'll make a video, you know, and anybody you say nowadays, Hey, let's make a video. You know, they go, Oh man, just get your camera out get your yeah. phone out and shoot it with that. And it takes all the fun away, of course, but that's what people say now when you go, Hey, let's make a video. <laughs> they go, well, why don't you? Well, you know, when we, when yeah, we created a year conservatory for actors here, um, it was really important to us that we had film history because I didn't have any of that. And okay. filmmaking, because if you're not an actor that can create your own content, you're at a disadvantage. So our film program was unbelievable because they would create short genre films and there'd be the Chaplin movie, the French New Wave movie, 
uh, the Tarantino-esque movie. I mean, uh, the Bergman movie. You couldn't believe it. It was like, and they shot it with phones. Nice. It was astounding. Really astounding. Wow. It's so surpassed. Because I, I taught directing at USC's film program off and on for a time. And of course you did. Uh, these guys were much better than those would-be directors because they understood the acting as the focus, not which camera angle you're on. Yeah. Right. Well, so, and what's Bob? Uh, go ahead. Bob, I, I just wanted to extrapolate a little because because Tom, <laughs> he came here to Portland to our SAG office, which, you know, there might have been six people there. That's because we're small, no people up here. But Tom came and brought all of that right into these local SAG, uh, you know, places and lay and teaches a whole class, runs up a couple of people because they're assholes and he calls them out on it, showing them, you know, just how how to take this. You know, you don't pretend to be sad, be freaking sad, you know, kind of stuff. And and he and I met him for dinner at the airport. That's how in and out he was. But, yeah, he brought that all over the place. That's awesome. Thirty four cities, nine countries. Oh, how, yeah. dude? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we Emily and I go, and she, Emily booked me into all these cities, and then I would land back here on a Sunday night or a Monday morning, and then I teach in the city. So yeah. how we did this, I mean, COVID turned out to be a strange blessing in that because I've got a lot of film production experience, converting this to camera was no big deal. And yeah, other right. people, some of them went out because they just didn't, you know, when I talked about the importance of film history, you know, like you meet 20 year old actors, they don't know who Charlie Chaplin is. They don't know who Clark Gable is. I'm going like, come on. You want to be Pickford. <laughs> right. Well, forget yeah. that. Like you want to be. They don't even know Hard Day's Night. Well, you know, you want to be part of this thing. It's never been easier to study it. Um, for for I, sure. I want to plug in for all three of you, if you don't have it. The Criterion channel is 10 bucks. Well, it's 100 bucks a year. It's art house cinema on your phone, in your house. It's the best app ever. It's all the stuff that we would stand in line to watch foreign films or art house films at your house. I mean, it's unbelievable. Right. Oh, God, right. Yeah, agree. yeah. So, yeah. Tom, how, how does it work today? I mean, so you're training people, you're a vocal, you're a coach, you're, you're doing all that. Is it hard to get you to be a, a trainer for you? Is it hard to get in your class? Do you have a lot of applicants and you reject so many? Do you have to audition, send tapes? And do you have in person plus online? What I know you got the New York NYC studio at tomtotteroff.com. You got the conservatory. How's it work today? Well, that's a great question. I mean, we're all of them, Tom Tom. Go well, ahead. For right now, we're we're all about online because it's so accessible and it's actually half the expense of what it was 20 years ago because I don't have to rent a theater and then students would have to pay for it. Yeah. So wow. like Paul was in my class, I had to pay for that space. You know, now there's no there's no overhead that way. Sure. Uh, when I did regional workshops, you know, they have to cover the flight, the hotel, the ground transportation, the theater rental, all that stuff. So there's something so streamlined about this. And I could go to Montreal or Toronto or Boston four times a year. But that compared to training every single week on Saturday and or Monday. I mean, the, the growth in people and uh, the class is primarily by interview. Uh, when it was a two year school, there was a series of auditions. It's a much bigger commitment. It's a membership by the month. But we look at it like a gym membership that and if you miss a class, they're all recorded. So wow. now you can watch them at your leisure. We've got 10 voice and speech trainers that are, you know, some of them are 40 year friends of mine. They teach at Yale drama and they teach with us. They teach at the Royal Shakespeare company and they teach with us. They teach at Julia. Yeah. Yes. Great. So you got Polly. Polly's oh, got I've got a question for you. Um, it's a real quick one, but so uh, all these people in your classes in the conservatory, they're all working hard. And hey, all of a sudden, the girl in the third row literally gets a job. OK, does that girl run to you with what her work is and go, Tom, how do I do this? And do you do that? Do you reach out and <laughs> get on that individualness? Well, what I responded to in you all back in the 60s was you were just so loose up there. And because you knew each other so well and you knew each other's voices so well, you just really were having fun. And that's a hard thing to teach people. 
to mm -hmm. be unattached and really just have a good time. Well, uh, I could see that coming in the other side, coming in backwards. We were doing that because we were family and kids and didn't know any better. So I can see that that would be awkward. Well, you know, there's certain people that just will. I mean, I can make anybody a lot stronger at auditioning, but some people, their nervous system, it's a weird yeah. thing to walk into a door and like pull your pants down and go, hi, everybody. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. For sure. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Right. Hand out the meat cleaver. <laughs> have a nice you know? day. That's yeah. a little weird. We have people getting jobs. Like now we had a gal in L.A. a week ago, came to acting later. She's in her 40s. She brings in an audition. We work on it. Uh, OK, background's great. Life's great. Yeah, submit it. She submits it herself. No callback. Nothing. She gets an episode of Magnum P.I. in Honolulu, first class plane ticket, five star hotel on the beach, 60 bucks a day per diem and 10 grand for the week. And she never had to leave her house. She didn't have a callback. So because right. wow. really, all auditions are this way. So this is really the way to teach. Mm -hmm. and, okay, I mean, right, I, right. I'm moved by seeing all of your faces and go, listen, at least if not once a month, every other month, we got to just do this because we miss you. Oh, right? you're right. adorable. Uh, well, how easy no, this no, is. No, yeah. We sit here and go, you know, we lost a few friends in the last month, younger than me, and go yeah. like, hey, you better be seeing the people you love, right? So Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we're going to see you this summer for sure. Hey, uh -huh. We'll see you next Saturday, Tom. We'll come yeah. on here and. We'll Zoom all afternoon together, man. I miss you. If we don't oh, come to New Orleans before that. I got another quick question, and then we can let you go then if you have to Oh, go. we're good. We're having a great time. Somebody. Hey, listen. So you've you've counseled hundreds, clearly, maybe thousands, I don't know, of thousands. actors, actresses. Thousands. 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 I want to know, percentage-wise, if, if you ever hit a very small percentage where they came in front of you and you just said, holy mackerel. This person is awesome. And and do you get a small subset that they get in front of you go, how am I going to tell this person to, to not do this? So tell me about that. Well, that's you know, really good questions, Bob. That um, the wonderful thing about acting is it's not like if you want to play center in the NBA, you better be a tall guy or tall gal, right? WNBA. If you want to sing opera, you could go to all the vocal coaches in the world, but if you don't have a certain innate gift, you're not going to sing at the Met, right? right. Uh, the thing about acting is you can look like Danny DeVito or you can look like Bob Hoskins, who I was blessed to work with a bunch. You know, they look like a couple of fire hydrants, <laughs> but they're like the best fire hydrants we got that your desire to do it is yeah. what makes you interesting in a scene, is there's sure. a fiction there and a fight there. That anybody can, that was your nature as a little kid. You had a big family. You know, if somebody puts strained peas in your mouth and you like carrots, you go, Bleh, right? And then if yeah. they persist, you clear the high chair, right? Well, the great thing about acting is it's how badly do you want it? You can, I mean, when you think about someone as unusual as a Bette Midler, right? Um, or um, who did we see? And Amy Schumer, average gal. We saw her do stand up not so long ago here in Connecticut, where you guys have played Ridgefield Playhouse. Yes. And uh, she was outrageous. But, you know, she looks like an average gal with an above average desire to share herself and tell a story. And people. Yeah. Were so the wonderful thing about acting, it's not like, you know, I love tennis, but I came to it way late. I mean, for me to be really, really good. I mean, you really have to start when you're a little kid. Sure. Right? Really good. If you want to compete at it, that ship is sailed. But acting, I've worked with people that start in their 60s. They end up on a series. There's and, still hope for me. I'm kidding. Oh, they, they, no, there's more than hope for you. Uh -huh. that, um, you know, it runs for five, six, seven years. They never have to work again. They can do any play in New York they want because they're the person from that show. Right. Yeah, or yeah. they can do any indie film they want. So, yeah. You know, it's it's a real golden age to be an actor because the stuff you can watch in your house and it's not reliant on box office, et cetera. I mean, yeah. producing is I was fortunate because with a couple of exceptions, everything I did on TV was very successful. And because the minute it isn't, you're in producer director jail because you didn't give them the money back. So That's it's a simple right. 
right? I mean, part of the reason, you know, they keep calling you every summer is everybody's really excited to see you and everybody keeps coming. Right. And if people stop coming to that show, then they'll have to make another plan or smaller venues, right? Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the cool thing, you know, but I think I think music is is similar too. How many nerdy oh, guys have you have you known that, you know, learned to play the guitar because they figured that, that was a way to get a girlfriend? And if you're allowed to admit that, that, allowed to admit that. Right. That if you just are disciplined enough to practice those changes over and over and over and over again, well, you might not be Hendrix, but you might get pretty damn good. Right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. We were banned from having uh, the girl part of uh, being in a rock band. There was a wall around us. But honestly, we weren't looking outside that wall too much because you do get so involved in your music that that is what you're involved with. And you're not looking for di uh, distractions at, during those heady you know, days. Yeah. I am really happy to hear that there is a golden age for anything artistic right now. Because like you're saying, that's really, that makes me happy that one of our peers, granted we're music, they're acting, but you know, the music business is not a, it's, it's a tough one. And for anybody coming up now wanting that thing, it's, 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 it's so infinite, the, the, it, it's impossible. So it makes me happy that though the shift for perhaps our industry isn't so great, at least y'all, you know what I mean? At least somebody's still thriving. <laughs> Oh you man, know? think of the writers, the scripts, the actors, the actors. That's what I mean. I'm glad to hear it. Channels. Yeah. And you know what? It seems anyway, Tom would know more about this. It seems they all got money and they all got quality. It's yeah. listen, quality. there's guys, there's guys I started out with that were terrible, but they just didn't give up. And right on. they're on a series on sci-fi, or yeah. and then you look at like, oh, they're making sixty thousand dollars a week. What? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, it's right? like yeah. and, and you don't even know their name yeah. but, but you see the cool thing is and that's for anybody who's interested in acting all of those streaming platforms now they have to provide new content because every month they're re-auditioning am i going to keep paying that 10 or 15 or 20 bucks a month and keep hbo yeah. Plus and keep hulu and keep you know go go yeah. through and keep Netflix and keep. And so they can't just lay back and go, well, I don't think we'll make anything this month. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, so that's it's a really great thing. I've never seen more work for actors and writers and directors. Glad to hear it. Well, so then all anybody really needs to do is just hang on to your dream as long as you live. I mean, get a job because, you know, just having a dream is not going to get her done. You got to have a job, but <laughs> never let go of that dream, man. And you can make it even if it's in heaven. <laughs> well, you guys are, you're such a great example of that, that, you know, because actors will love to say, well, you know, my job's getting in the way of class. I go get a new job. Yeah. There's never been more jobs. You can work from home. You can, oh my God. I mean, there are four star restaurants in New York that have now hiring in the window. Yeah, I, I hear that. Years as a server bartender. And I'm going, I never saw the fancy restaurants with a now hiring. Exactly. You can walk in the door and write your ticket. Yeah. I, your chair. yeah. I love that chair. Because most, most of them, most of them, them also oh. say, most of them also say all positions, <laughs> hiring now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, there are restaurants that have closed because they can't staff. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so yeah. Don't, don't yeah. complain about your day job or your this. If you really want it, you it's know, Polly, you know, Bob no, does his gig. You know, it's like, come on. Come on. It's a come perfect, on, it's a perfect well, time also for that hardworking actor because the wages have never been so high. Yeah. I mean, McDonald's, yeah. you can get 20 bucks an hour. I mean, it's crazy. So, yeah. Tell yeah. yeah. right, me, so, what's, what's right. in the future? What are you, what's, what's the next thing you and Emma are up to? Well, what are, what are we up to, Emily? <laughs> <laughs> what are we up to? I don't know. We're just we're, keeping on doing what you're doing. Hi, honey. I'm doing hi. Hi, we're, girl. Hi, girl. I like your, I like your, your sun bonnet. Thanks. It's because the hair dryer died. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're we're coaching, as Tom said, on Saturdays and on Mondays, and then we're also working with pretty soon with um, uh, to have a class that's more focused on public speaking and public speakers. So we're doing that right. too. And where can people tell everybody where they can find you guys for any and all things that have to do with y'all? 
I will. Should I put it in the chat or that doesn't really matter? You guys will share something later, but it's TomTodoroff.com. So it's yeah. Tom and then T-O-D-O-R-O-F-F, like Frank Frank. Dot com. <laughs> I love it. And as one of my students said not so long ago, you know, the first four letters of your last name is what you teach people to do. Oh, hey, uh, that's that's good. I thought you were going to say it's very close to the name of the dog in uh, the Wizard of Oz. Anyway. Oh, no. So, well, and, then, and then they said, and in Spanish, because she was Spanish, oh, and no. do means todo, and you're, well, the second part is rough, so that means you're all dog. Oh. <laughs> love yeah, it. Okay. Listen, much love to you both. We will see you in June. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Oh, oh, look at that. A pillow. What a guy. What a guy. I'm going to sleep over. I want to have, lay my head on that. Yeah. Oh, that is weird. Sorry. Oh, I love it. We, we love you guys. Nice. Tom, thank you so much for being our guest. We really appreciate it. We Thanks. love you so much. We love you so much. Love oh, you yeah. so much. Hey, love cutting you guys. Rest. I'll hit you up. Bye, bye. February tenth, cutting room. Yeah, yeah. Be there. February tenth. Yes, okay. February tenth, Missy. I'll spread it out at the end here. <laughs> hey, all right, kids. Love all y'all. All right, Peace goodbye, out, everybody. Tom Thanks, Tom Totter up. Look him up. He's amazing. Yes. Thank you, Tom. Tom. Bye, Tom. Tom. <laughs>